daddy too Union got in country was all they ever knew They worked from early morning till the evening was so blue When they strike the mine they'd walk the line Cause that's just what you do And you're born in West Virginia A miner through and through Union got in country was all you ever knew Union got in country West Virginia to the other side I reckon heaven ain't going nowhere mm-hmm. heaven ain't going nowhere glory am my hard road to travel I'm told heaven ain't going nowhere back men double by ponderous load I reckon heaven ain't going nowhere. Mm-hmm. Heaven ain't going nowhere. Work all day so I sleep all right. Heaven ain't going nowhere. Raise a little hell come Saturday night. I reckon heaven ain't going nowhere. Mm-hmm. Heaven ain't going nowhere. <clears throat> Don't worry about putting nothing away. Heaven ain't going nowhere. Money's no good come a judgment day. I reckon heaven ain't going nowhere. Mm-hmm. Heaven ain't going nowhere. Mm-hmm. Heaven ain't going nowhere. My daddy was a miner. My daddy's daddy too. Union got in country was all they ever knew. They worked from early to morning till the evening whistle blew. We strike the mine, walk the line, cause that's just what you do. When you're born in West Virginia, a miner through and through. Union got in country was all you ever knew. It was Union got in country, West Virginia golden blue. Country was all they ever knew. Before there was a union, the company was king. You'd work your fingers to the bone, couldn't show a thing. You shifted cold Friday, drew your pen in. Walk down to the company store, give it back again. That's why they made the union. They had nothing left to lose. Union got in country was all they ever knew. It was Union got in country, West Virginia, golden blue. Union got in country was all they ever knew. You know, there is power in the union. 
And there is power in a song, but only if everybody sings along. <laughs> so out there in uh, virtual union land, when this comes back around, in spite of any loyalties to any football team you may have, I'd like for you to sing this song with me. I think all these cameras go two ways nowadays, so if I were you, I'd sing, because if you don't, somebody will think you're a scab. <laughs> it was Union, God, and country, West Virginia, gold and blue. Union, God, and country was all we ever knew. It was Union, God, and country, West Virginia, gold and blue. Country was all we ever knew. Union God and Country. Um, thanks. I wrote, um, thank you, Chief. I wrote that, um, song for a show called Coal Country, a play that went up in New York City that, um, came about because some friends of mine, Jessica Blank and Eric Jensen, approached me. Um, they wanted to um, travel to West Virginia and talk to folks that had survived, meaning folks that were there that day and the family members of people who didn't make it that day of the Upper Big Branch uh, coal mine explosion, which happened, uh, well, it was six years before when we started working on this project. It's 10 years ago this year. And um, they wrote a script, and, and I wrote some songs, and it was called Cold Country, and it went up in New York. And I just sort of kept going with that to make this record, Ghosts of West Virginia, the seven songs that were in the show, and, uh, and uh, three more. And uh, a lot of reasons I just decided this was the record that I needed to make right now. Um, the story, um, it's everybody's story about their experience with that, and it's, and it's in the, every word in the play is, is right out of the mouths of the West Virginians who lived it. And there's a point at which everybody's talking about where they were when they heard, or, you know, where, if they, whether they were at the mine or whether they were, you know, going about their lives that day, how they found out that something was going on up, or, up at Upper Big Branch. Because all these folks were... Um, had been union families. Said uh, this had been union property before it changed hands. Before Peabody sold it to Performance Coal, and uh, it uh, it's uh, everybody knew that it was dangerous. Everybody that worked there, but it was uh, it was uh, keep their mouth shut or lose their job. And then one at 3:27. On April the 5th, 2010, it finally happened. <laughs> well, the devil put the coal in the ground. <clears throat> devil put the coal in the ground. <clears throat> Buried it deep, it'll never be found. Devil put the coal in the ground. Said that'll be a diamond someday. <clears throat> That'll be a diamond someday <clears throat> You'll be long gone dead anyway That'll be a diamond someday Well, the devil put the coal in the ground the devil put the coal in the ground Set a double dog there to follow me down the devil put the coal in the ground Give me two hands Good Lord, give me two hands Said, is you an animal or is you a man? Good Lord, give me two hands Lord, give her, then take it away Lord, give her, then take it away Devil do the same damn hole every day Lord, give her, then take it away Well, the devil put the coal on the ground Devil put the coal on the ground Set a double dog there to pile a man down Devil put the coal in the ground
up in the morning and pray. Keep away from my door and the devil at bay. Wake up in the morning and pray. Well, a black lung came someday. Black lung came someday. I'm already underground, I reckon, anyway. The black lung will kill me someday. Well, the devil put the coal in the ground. Well, the devil put the coal in the ground. Said a double dog there, you to follow me down. Devil put the coal in the ground. Thanks. So, um, these songs um, on the record are in a little bit different order than they, they ran in the show. A lot of that is because um, the show changed in, when we finally got into rehearsals and we, because of uh, trying to, you know, we knew this record was coming and I'd already written uh, the last three songs or had most of them and we knew pretty much what was going to be in the show. And we went into Electric Lady Studios in New York City in December recorded the record so I think the order that they're on in the records the original was the original like tentative running order of them in the show and then that got changed around so if you saw the show in New York which it ended um, we, we went up and we were we had a hit on our hands and people um, people in New York City learned a lot about West Virginia and a lot of people from West Virginia came and and uh, including some uh, nearly all of the folks that are portrayed in the show and um, we were thankful for that and then this thing that's happened to all of us happened this this the the pandemic as my friend Joe Ely calls it and um, the play closed we're hoping uh, that it'll go back up again and you'll get a chance to come see it in New York City and we no matter what Jessica Blank Eric Jensen and I intend to make sure that this show comes to West Virginia before it's over with and coal country in general but uh um, if you see the show, the first thing you see is me or, or, or my associate, Joe Young, walk out with a guitar and uh, tell you another West Virginia story, the, all the one about John Henry and the steam drill and the Big Ben Tunnel, because that's another story about men and a big machine. Yeah. 
Jeff could in a way John Henry could have told him what that mean Come and brought in all the big machine John Henry was a steel driving man John Henry was a steel driving man He died in West Virginia with his hammer in his hand We sing about him all across the land John Henry was a steel driving man John Henry My uh, youngest child is 10 years old His name is John Henry And he uh, When he was born uh, A friend of mine said uh, Said uh, what'd you name him And I said I said, John Henry, and he said, like the song. And I said, yeah, exactly like the song. He said, but doesn't he die in the song? And I said, yeah, with his hammer in his hand. And uh, a lot of people, I got, when John Henry was born, I got, um, people gave me railroad spikes and railroad hammers because they thought that's what John Henry was doing. Just for the record, what John Henry was a steel driver, which meant that he swung a hammer and a guy named a shaker held a bit and that bit, they were cutting holes into solid rock, drilling holes to set the charges that blasted the way through solid rock through the mountain and made the Big Bend Tunnel and the other tunnels in the mountains in West Virginia and other parts of those mountains. Um, so that's a story about men in a big machine. Um, there aren't as many jobs in coal as there used to be. Um, even when mines are going full blast, and that's this is in any kind of industry because of machines. Um, in the case of modern coal mining, it's a thing called a continuous miner. Um, in this configuration that has existed up Big Branch, it's a long wall. That's a almost thousand foot long seam of coal and a machine custom assembled to kind of go across that in the words of Roosevelt Lynch in the play. Uh, like a cheese cutter, go all the way across that, all the way down from one end to the other, and then all the way back again and shear that coal off. And um, takes a, you know, small crew to run that. You know, there's other parts of the mine, other things going on. Uh, but it's a, it's a big, powerful machine. If it's not properly maintained, like all machines, it is dangerous. And what happens is methane builds up behind it. And if the ventilation is correct, it pumps the, the, the dangerous gases out, and that wasn't happening at Upper Big Branch, and it had been not happening for a long time, and um, it finally exploded. Um, there were 29 guys that lost their lives that day. Um, during um, search and rescue operations, the first day they accounted for 25. Um, and there were four families, and two of them are people that are... Um, that those people are folks that I've met and that, that are, are portrayed in, in coal country. Um, they sat for four days waiting to hear um, whether their folks were still alive. Uh, there were some footprints found. And because of those footprints, when the, when the mine inspectors came in and the rescue crews from outside of the, the coal company, they saw those footprints and they told these families that, hey, there's... There's, they could have made it to a rescue chamber. So these folks sat for four days and went in. Now, there are stories that there were people present that day that knew all along um, that those footprints didn't belong to those miners. But uh, I don't know. Um, but this, uh, this was the last thing that I wrote for the show, and it's written for that, that part of the show where, where these folks are waiting to find out what happened to the people that they love. The morning that the world began God reached out and closed his hand And when it opened up again moment vanished in the wind and since that day it's never stopped no matter how we wind the clock and 
on Tobin's lived and died. Time was never on their side. As seasons come, seasons go. Sunrise, sunset, rain, and snow. And every time the world turns round, a brand new shiny day is found. We pray to who we fear the most the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And take whatever fate provides. Time is never on our side Sometimes an hour hurdles by Sometimes a moment never dies Some days crawl and others fly Eyes are not the reason why And won't oh, let me hesitate Good things come to those that wait who ever told you that one lied? Time is never on your side. Time is never on our side. So, um, They eventually um, came out and they said there were no survivors. And everybody started going through the process of uh, identifying bodies, and uh, which was a pretty horrific experience for most. Um, and then they started asking questions. And... Uh, there was uh, eventually um, um, you know they started talking in terms of trying to hold the people that, that owned the coal mine responsible and, and um, when you know when the story broke um, the rest of us around the country this was national news for about a second but while it was if I uh, probably one of the people that you saw that uh, were actually out talking to the media and asking questions on behalf of the other families were well, Gary Quarles because he knew a lot about mining and he lost his son Gary Wayne that day he's down there on the long wall and Tommy Davis and Tommy Davis was angry and it showed but he after all, he lost his son, his brother, and his nephew that day. Look me in the eyes when you're talking to me. Want to see in your soul when you lie. Don't try and tell me that you couldn't foresee. Well, everybody reckons it was a matter of time. Goddamn right, I'm emotional. I ain't nothing but a man. Hell yes, it's a personal before you leave here, you're gonna understand. It's about fathers, it's about sons, it's about lovers waking up in the middle of a night alone. It's about muscle, it's about bone, it's about a river running thicker than water, and it's about blood. Once upon a time in America, 
A working man knew where he stood Nowadays just skipping by is a miracle Probably wouldn't give it up if I could Don't try and tell me about the state of the economy Fiscal reality, profit and loss None of that matters once you're underground Anyway, damn sure can't tell me nothing about cost It's about fathers It's about sons It's about living up in the middle of a night alone it's about muscle, it's about bone, it's about a river running thicker than water, and it's about blood. Tell yourself it was an accident, isolated incident, part of the job. <laughs> yeah, well, tell that to the families, kids without daddies, and tell it to God. Is that the when you hear howling through the holler Or the ghost of a widow that cries For every man that died for a cold come to dollar Lung full of dust and a heart full of lies It's about It's about sons It's about lovers waking up in the middle of a lie It's about muscle It's about bone It's about a river running thicker than water And it's about blood It's about Carl Acord, Jason Atkins, Christopher Bell, Gregory Stephen Brock, Kenneth Allen Chapman, Robert E. Clark, Charles Timothy Davis, Corey Davis, Michael Lee Ellswick, William I. Griffith, Stephen Hera, Edward D. Jones, Richard K. Lane, William Roosevelt Lynch, Nicholas Darrell McCroskey, Joe Markham, Ronald Lee Maynard, James E. Mooney, Howard D. Payne, Dillard Earl Persinger, Joel R. Price, And those are the names of the 29 guys that died that day. Would you grab that lyric and put it back up for me, yep. please? Um, so, it goes on and talks about the trial and what happened during the trial. And, and uh, everybody's, uh, their own individual reactions to that. And then, um, and then they tell the stories about, you know... The story's about, about processing grief, about processing loss. And uh, everybody had one, and every, all of the characters in the play who, like I said, these words all come from the people that actually lived it. And, uh, and the last thing in the play is um, it's Patty Stover, who um, lost her fiance, Greg Brock, that day. She tells her story about what happened after the explosion and trying to get on with her life. And um, I wrote this song um, pretty early in the process, it, the, the sort of the idea that maybe there would become, for the most part in the play, I sing all the songs and the actors say all the words. And this is the one place where that kind of comes together. And um, so the last thing that, uh, if you get a chance to see Cold Country, and I hope you, that you will, or if you come out to see Steve Earl and the Dukes, um, next summer when we will be out there and we will be in West Virginia by the way you West Virginia folks I promise more than we've ever been before um, and uh, and if you buy the record and listen to it um, you will hear and either way you will hear somebody you know way better looking than I am and way singing way prettier than I do come out and sing this song uh, Eleanor Whitmore, who's our fiddle player, had been with the band for 10 years and, and uh, sings her butt off as well. And she sings it on the record, and uh, Mary Bacon sang it in the play. And it's, 
um, and it ends, the, the play ends like this. Well, I've lived here all my life. Don't know why I'm so surprised that the sun comes so early to this valley. And if I'm not on my toes, the sun comes and goes, and I'm all alone with darkness all around me. If I could see your face again, black with coal and deal grin, turn like turns like to the shadow of the mountain. I drop everything and run Like I know I should have done Every time you come home to me in the evening But tonight's just like the night before Ain't nobody walking through that door if I could touch you one more time Just to hold your hand in mine I'd never let it go again, I promise Maybe we could find a town Dreams on bed underground Without so many ghosts around the home is not a prayer until I turn around to find you there if I could see her face again and I knew well I know then how oh, I wouldn't make you work so hard to win me I'd surrender to your arms Wrapped around me safe and warm Cause I knew you were the one from the beginning And I'd do almost anything If I could only see your face again And that is how Cold Country ends. Um, I'll grab that. There's, um, I decided to, to forge on and make a record that, you know, finish making a West Virginia record. And it's, um, and it's not just about because of West Virginia. I think it's a, a pretty unique place it holds in, in America's history, you know, all across the board. And, and um, you know, it's just the idea was that, you know, I think people in New York, the theater audiences that actually saw the show know a lot more about West Virginia and West Virginians than they did before. But there's um, some of these songs I've never really sung before, so I'm going to cheat a little bit here. Um, let me see if I can find this one. Uh, at any rate, um, one thing for sure, um, there's no doubt in my mind, and I don't think in any doubt in any of the people involved in this story's minds, that this explosion happened. You can go into the technical reasons why, but it was about money, and it was about production. And if this was the first non-union mine on this mountain, and uh, it had been sold by you know a union company to to uh, Massey Energy and Performance Coal, the subsidiary that actually ran it, and if it uh, if this had been a union mine with union rules in place, this explosion would have never happened. I really, truly believe that. What um, continues to happen, and it, you'd think it uh, would be an archaic thing in coal mining by now, is, is black lung. And um, I kept writing songs about this. This song probably could have been in the show, but uh, it just didn't end up fitting into the narrative. Um, but it's, uh, I, th I think I wrote the... 
the line that sums this whole um, thing up at, at the end. I mean, there's a lot of people that think they know um, a lot about, you know, about coal and the people that mine coal and people that do other dangerous jobs. I, I you know, um, I'm concerned about the environment, but the truth is that um, we all have to come to some sort of agreement and do something together to, ch to change that. Meanwhile, as long as men go down in the ground and go into workplaces that are dangerous uh, anywhere, they need a union and uh, to help look after their interests. And uh, I think, you know, basically you got a boss, then you need a union. And the black lung problem has gotten worse be with, with mechanized mining. It's amazing the amount of coal dust that was in the air. It's the coal dust that, that the methane just starts the fire. It's the coal dust that explodes. So this is, uh, this is, uh, this is called black lung. Sunrise, lighting up a ridge top, slicing to the frost like a red hot knife. Sometimes I'm dreaming I'm running across, but I couldn't have saved my life. Hound dog yipping in a holler, must have jumped a bear bubble, listen to him run. Somebody ought to catch him by the collar, but I ain't going nowhere because I'm down with black lung. Black lung never gets better, ever little bit harder to draw shotgun loaded in the corner but i ain't going nowhere because i'm down with black lung some days are better than the other ones sit out on the porch when it's cool at night can't say I'm not until I'm suffering Every breath I take like a 12-round fight Grandbabies out beneath a willow tree Hollering and laughing and the sound like fun Can't pick them up and hug the necks anyway Sorry, honey, granddaddy's down with black lung Black lung never gets better Every breath a little bit harder to draw Shotgun looted in the corner Black in a long wall mine first breath of fresh air at the whistle and i already knew it's just a matter of time if i'd never been down in a coal mine a lot longer hell that ain't a close call but then again i've never had anything half a life is better than nothing at all black lung never gets better every breath a little bit harder to draw Every breath a little bit harder to draw. Shotgun loaded in the corner. I ain't going nowhere because I'm down with black lung. <clears throat> Thanks, Chief. So, it's, um, you know, this record rocks pretty good. There's a lot of great musicianship on it. Um, I, the best band I've ever had in my life, and they did a great job on that. So shout out to the Dukes, scattered all over the country. We had originally planned to do this uh, live stream with the band because things were starting to calm down, but uh, things opened up here in Tennessee where I am to where, I don't know, it looked a little scary, so I couldn't ask everybody to come here uh, from places that seemed safer than a lot of them live. So I'm still here playing this music by myself. Um, I want to play um, just a couple more songs on the record. I got to find this is another one I've never sung. 
I did th I've done this song once with the band, and well, you'll see what I mean. This is like I needed something. It's a pretty dark record. I mean, I'm pretty proud of it. I think it's entertaining, but yeah, I'm kind of weird. And uh, but I uh, <laughs> I did I felt like I needed something to lighten things up a little bit. So this is uh, I'm gonna need to move this thing. rock and roll song I wrote uh, to try to come up with something another kind of West Virginia story and then it, I remembered that uh, uh, General Chuck Yeager's from from uh, West Virginia and so I just came up with a kind of Davy Crockett kind of shaggy dog story about Chuck Yeager and it's called The Fastest Man Alive Well I come to West Virginia and I did I was born the ground running like a wind and I was gone. I was passing in a rabbit and left a deer behind. Mountains couldn't hold me so I headed down the line. Got the California joint up and up the slam. Comes over with the notches, I'm a mighty mighty man. Pull me down to the top me how to fly. Ship me across the ocean, I'm a fastest man alive. My name's Charles Edwin Yeager, everybody calls I'm a bomb sticking rub of the brothers who I love. It's all that they can handle when they shot me down to France. Swam across the channel just to get another chance. I was over pinned a metal on my chest. Took me to an airfield in the desert. Now we got a plane. Everybody's scared to fly. Said bubble, let me at it. I'm a fancy man alive. So um, I want to thank all the unions that helped us put this together. I belong to three, and I've um, been a member of AFM since I was 19 years old, and um, belong to AFTRA. Four, if you count ASCAP, and I'm an ASCAP writer rather than a BMI writer because ASCAP's a guild and BMI's a corporation. Um, it, unions are considered to be a fundamental component of democracy everywhere in the world except the United States of America for the most part, and um, there's reasons for that, and there are people that have fought against that almost the whole uh, the whole time the labor movement's been going on in the United States. This area that this record's about is where the, the labor movement began in the United States. Uh, the parts of Pennsylvania where they ended up making steel, and the parts of West Virginia where they took the steel making coal out of, and it's a... Uh, if you're a coal miner, um, there's a lot of pride involved. Not everybody can do this. And uh, there was always, even when there were, there, were, there were way more jobs than there are now, 
for a lot of people that grew up seeing their father and their grandfather go down and then they get to come their time and they go underground and they'd find out that they just couldn't do it. Uh, it's not something everybody can do. It's a lot of pride they take in that. Um, when I went to West Virginia, it was funny. Um, you know, I, I go there to play, and uh, so I knew a little bit more about it than some of the other people involved when we started. But it, uh, I learned a lot, and um, and I get, and you think about things differently when you when you're when you're you know hanging out a little bit longer and get to know some people and. Um, one of the first things that happened was, and this was actually the first song I wrote, and it did not end up in the play. Um, but somebody that we talked to, and I won't say who, um, pulled me aside because they knew that I had this history of, um, um, had some problems with substances in my past, and that I'd managed to overcome that, and they were in, they were curious about how I had managed to do that. And so I told them how I did it, and that's all I can do. Um, and um, I don't know whether it made them feel any better or not, but um, there's a lot of that going around in, in, in West Virginia and every place else in America where there aren't that many jobs. The, the truth is, not everybody in West Virginia is working in coal, and these are they're, they're good-paying jobs, but the shifts are way longer than they used to be. There's no protection from things that happen like what happened to you lunch break, your, your lunch is your, your sandwich in one pocket and your pop in, an, in another pocket and you just keep you keep running coal and, but there's a lot of people that never get those jobs in the first place and the only people they see that have anything are the people that have them and so this is for the people um, that, that don't get that call and don't get that job well, I woke up with a naked wheel down in my bones. Wasn't nothing else I could do. I took your wedding ring to West Virginia, drew it along, pawned it for a cure for the blues. But hey, babe, I saved you some. It's okay, babe, cause it won't be long. Come up Monday morning, the phone is gonna ring. It'll be my brother down at the mine. And he'll tell me, come running, cause he had to pull some strings. I promise not to blow it this time. And hey, babe, it'll be alright. Hey, babe, if you just hold on tight, everything will get better when brother gets me well, my brother buys a brand new Ram truck with a him and satellite radio too. And I reckon that's the first thing I'm gonna get me, baby blue Camaro for you. Hey, babe, we'll ride in style that day, babe. Main Street Mile, I'll get myself together when brother gets me on at the mile. so much uh, appreciate it thanks to everybody that helped us put the get put this together and thanks to 
all the folks in coal country that this story was about. If you got a boss, you need a union. I'll be back shortly after I get a soda pop to answer some questions. My daddy was a miner. My daddy's daddy too. Union got in country was all they ever knew. They worked from early morning till the evening was so blue. When they strike the mine, they walk the line, cause that's just what you do. And you're born in West Virginia, a miner through and through. Union got in country was all you ever knew. Union got in country, West Virginia, gold and blue. Union got in country was all we ever knew. Show a thing. You shifted cold to Friday, do you pay a man? You'd walk down to the company store and get it back again. That's why they made the union, they had nothing left to lose. The union got in country, was all they ever knew. And the union got in country, West Virginia, Golden Blue. The union got in country, was all we ever knew.
daddy was a miner, my daddy's daddy too. Union got in country was all they ever knew. They worked from early morning till the evening was so blue. When they strike the mine, they walk the line, cause that's just what you do. And you're born in West Virginia, a miner through and through. Union got in country was all you ever knew. Hi, my name is Elise Bryant. I'm the executive director of the Labor Heritage Foundation and president of the Coalition of Labor Union Women. My question for you is, who or what influenced you to be a songwriter who addresses issues of social injustice? Oh, boy. Um, well, the truth is, I, when I started writing songs in the, the late 60s and early 70s growing up, I just that era that I grew up in, it never occurred to me that you had to separate those two things. The Vietnam War was going on. There was a lot of that kind of music going on. And um, and I was too young to play places. I started playing out when I was 14, 15 years old, and I was too young to play places that served liquor, which means I ended up in coffee houses. So I was immediately exposed to... To folk music and and um so i'm i don't you know i pretty much always knew who woody guthrie was and and um um and of course i knew who bob dylan was and i backtracked to to bob's earlier stuff because my first bob record would have been on my own would have been highway 61 just because of my age but my drama teacher in high school turned me on to to the free will and bob dylan and i started listening to that stuff when his stuff was super super topical and and um started understanding that you could do that. And um, I just, uh, it just never, I don't think I remember hearing anybody suggesting that that wasn't a good thing to do till sometime in the 80s. So just uh, kind of do the political math on that and I don't think it's that hard to figure out. Uh, let's see, we got a question from YouTube. Um, Will there be a chance of seeing the entirety of Cold Country somewhere um, or purchase a performance of the show? Well, um, our intention is, and the public theater's um, intention and and my intention and Jessica Blank and Eric Jensen's uh, intention is to try to put Cold Country back up. We just don't know when theater is going to come back to New York City. Our intention was always for there to be a tour of Cold Country that... Um, that went to cold country that went to West Virginia, especially, and probably parts of Kentucky and Pennsylvania and Ohio and other places where they take black stuff out of the ground and people, you know, lives are at stake in that process. So, um, we, uh, as far as a digital version or, uh, or a video version of it, um, that's a possibility. Um, there's a couple of things that are being talked about that I can't really get into, but but there, you'll see other versions of Cold Country, so you can hear the the because it, it would be a shame for you not to be able to hear my record. <clears throat> all the songs that are in the show are there, but it's not the show, and it's not the 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 words of those folks and 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 the 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 way that jessica and, and eric put it together and 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 the performances of those actors that you, you you are missing that you, you aren't seeing that and it's it's the words of those of the west virginians that lived it which is it's a very powerful thing and i had the best seat in the house so i, I really want everybody else to be able to have that experience too hey steve congratulations on the new album my name is ben grosscup i'm executive director of the people's music network for songs of freedom and struggle my question is about the ways in which artists who make music for the labor movement are embedded in that movement. We hey, Steve, congratulations on the new album. My name is Ben Grosscup. I'm executive director of the People's Music Network for Songs of Freedom and Struggle. My question is about the ways in which artists who make music for the labor movement are embedded in that movement. We have in our tradition of labor troubadours, great artists like Joe Hill, John Hancox, and Joe Glazer. They all sang about movements to which they had a personal and organic connection. It seems that many singer songwriters I know of today who write labor music wanna have the artistic freedom to write about struggles they personally don't directly bear the weight of fighting themselves. Do you see yourself 
as deeply embedded in the struggles that you write about. And in those situations where there is a gap between the artist's experience and the topic they write about, what do you feel is the artist's responsibility when representing the struggles of other people? Um, well, this record in, in particular is, is about um, an attempt to for me to understand better in the process of writing these songs, the people that I'm writing about, that's part of the reason for doing this. I think the country is in a lot of trouble right now because people in New York city don't know anything about people in West Virginia and people in West Virginia don't know anything about people in New York city. I think we discovered that the West Virginians knew more about New York city than the other way around. But, uh, uh, it's, um, I belong to three unions. Um, I've stood, I, my activism began when I was uh, mostly against the Vietnam War when I was a teenager. Um, I, you know, I, I did a lot of work against the death penalty, which I have, you know, uh, I come from Texas where they execute a lot of people and, and, and I didn't think that was right and didn't think it was good for us, you know. Um, so I did that work for a long time. I've stood outside, um, um, a prison in, in Texas and held a mother's hand while her son was being executed on the inside. And I stood 10 feet from a guy that was being executed because he asked me to. Um, and it wasn't, these guys weren't innocent. Um, they were, um, no, for, they were just guys that wrote me that I had a correspondence with. I, I, I don't know why innocent guys don't write me. <laughs> that, that was never my part of it. I just don't believe in, in the death penalty. That's, that's my belief. And so I did that work for a long time. Um, you know, I think not everybody can write a political song that's a good song. And if you write, um, you can be as committed as you want to. And if you can't write, you can't write. And <laughs> it's just one of those things. I do it because I can. I don't, I, I think I, I have, um, I write more songs about girls than I do anything else to this day. But but I, I figured out that I could get some hard to deal with ideas across to people if I sang them with that and, and it works better than when I just say the same information. And, and, um, uh, I think that's my job and, and, uh, and, uh, um, I intend to keep doing it. So from Facebook, Tracy Murphy asks, can you recommend any reading material about the mining disaster and, and other books? And I'm in the UK. I, you'll have to to just go back online to look for something about Upper Big Branch in particular. Um, there's a, a I read a lot of news stories is what I read. I don't know whether there is a book. Um, the script of Coal Country will become available and that that information at some point. And um, uh, but it's called the Upper Big Branch. Um, it was the name of the mine, and it, there's tons and tons of material online from from the time of the disaster when it happened i think um, um if there's a book about it i haven't read it yet so sorry about that hi i'm joan hill i'm on staff with the united steel workers and a proud member of local 3657. i was born and raised in west virginia and attended west virginia university i understand your reference to the gold and blue i practiced law for 13 years in the heart of the coal fields in Logan County. I represented miners and United Mine Workers. I cut my teeth on the Pittston strike of 1989. I'm curious about your experiences in Raleigh County, West Virginia. You went to interview the families of those who had died and those who had survived. In a recent interview, you said, you can't communicate with people unless you understand the texture of their lives and the realities that provide significance to their days. How did you come to understand that texture and those realities? What was your best experience during your time in Southern West Virginia? Um, well, I mean, I knew more about West Virginia when we started this in Jessica and Eric did simply because I'd been there some to play over the years and, and that part of the world, I know a lot of people, I, I got a lot of friends from West Virginia, Tim O'Brien, um, it, who we had a bluegrass band together is from there and and I met a lot of folks from there over the years that play music but <clears throat> this this was different because um 
you know, we met these folks and, um, you know, it's tough because they were speaking to us because they wanted to. They wanted their stories told. And so it was the, the very first day, the very first um, stop that we made was to interview Gary Quarles. And uh, Gary um, lost his son, Gary Wayne, in, in the UBB explosion. And uh, he was a union miner for years and years and years. And he probably, I, I, I think it's possible this hurt him in ways that, that, that I can't even imagine because he knew, he knew that, this, that what was going on there wasn't right. He was hearing it from other people and nothing about what was happening at UB, including what he was hearing from his son, sounded safe to him and sounded right to him. So I, I wrote a song called The Mountain years ago. I wrote it's sort of a mini suite within a bluegrass record I made with the Del McCurry band. And I, it was set in, in Harlan County, uh, Kentucky, and it was about the idea, it's like the same character speaking to you. In the first song, he's kind of full of piss and vinegar and a union guy and and militant and and has a lot of you know has a lot of hope and a lot of fight and the second is is the same guy speaking years later which is the song the mountain itself which we did it's the one song i didn't create specifically for coal country i did we did perform the mountain and the reason we did is for some reason i got my guitar out that day and i played the mountain in gary Coral's living room and i cried and he cried and 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 jessica and eric cried and so it, it ended up in the show Uh, let's see, from Facebook, Jim Mattingly asks, first, thanks and congrats for continuing to create diverse, thought-provoking, badass albums time and time again. That's hard for me to read that myself. I need somebody else to do this. As a creative director, though, my question, your album uh, art has also been um, consistently stellar. How did you get hooked up with Tony Fitzpatrick way back when? How much did Tony pay you to, to send this question in? Uh, Tony Fitzpatrick is an artist from the south side of Chicago, and he's the most south side of Chicago of anybody you'll ever meet. Um, <clears throat> he's, um, he's an artist that comes from completely working class background. Um, he's an artist, like somebody called him an outsider audience, suggested that what he did was primitive at one point because it reminded them of some kind of primitive folk art. And it, boy, it, it pissed him off because his mother literally, you know, like worked her butt off to make sure that he had art lessons. And he's a, he's a, he's a great draftsman, a great drawer, a great visual artist. And he's been doing my album covers since I feel all right in 1996. And I've known him since 1986 and he's one of my very best friends in the world. And he's a, he's a visual artist. He's an actor, he's a poet. And, uh, and he's, a you know, He's a guy from the south side of Chicago, <laughs> and, and, and I, I'll, I'll keep wrapping my art up in his art until I stop, I stop making them. Hello, I'm Jerry Lee, a member, 62-year member of IBEW Local 429 in Nashville, Tennessee, and former AFL-CIO president of Tennessee AFL-CIO. Uh, my question to Steve is, what would your response be to the Bernie supporters as a former Bernie supporter, uh, to the people that say they're not going to vote for anyone if Bernie's not on the not the nominee. Well, what I did, I did support Bernie Sanders through every minute of the 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 primary campaign in the last cycle, um, and uh, I thought there was a moment there when a lot of things that I believe deeply were getting talked about in a way that they hadn't been in, in the mainstream political arena. And a lot of them have to do with, with labor unions and, uh, and trade unionism. But um, he didn't get the nomination, and so I voted for Hillary Clinton. And, um, you know, I, that's what I do. I, I'm a very um, – I, I, my politics are pretty far to the left – but um, I, I probably agree with Bernie Sanders about more than probably any presidential candidate has come along in, in a long time. But uh, I also know this is a big country, and I see more of it than a lot of people do. And I've always understood that not everybody's like me. Not everybody thinks exactly like me. But I think we're in trouble right now because we've been concentrating on how we're different rather than what we have in common. And – and um, you know, and I, I, I'm perfectly comfortable voting for Joe Biden this time around. I don't waste my vote. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. This is from Facebook, I guess. For, as what uh, I guess that's what FB stands for. I, I don't do this social media thing. If 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 you're um, out there posting like. Uh, putting stuff up on social media on my sites i have these little sites but people at my office do it because man i i'm i'm too busy to to be on all this stuff um robert neal says it seems the only good thing to come out of this pandemic is that the world seems to have become more of a global community people are waking up to the fact that our so-called leaders have let us down do you think people will have a less selfish political point of view after this thanks for yet another strong collection of songs um you know, I've seen it bring people together, and I've seen it push people apart. There are people that have that have been threatened for wearing masks, and um, you know, look for me for myself. You know, I left New York City on the the, the show closed on the the twelfth and um, of March, and the next day my son's school closed, and then my gym closed, and that was it. I just didn't. No, there was no theater. There was no not, no baseball. That's 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 heartbreaking. And and there was just nothing left for me to, to keep me in New York City. And I have a house in Tennessee, so we headed out. My mother lives here. I've seen her once, and that was after I'd been here for several weeks and felt pretty sure I wasn't gonna sit, get sick, um, and my son wasn't gonna get sick. And I saw her from across the room, and, and I wore a mask. I wear a mask when I go to the grocery. I wear gloves when I go to the grocery. Tennessee's just been reopened again. I don't know what's going to happen with that. I don't think this is the end of the world. I think we build, eventually we become immune and, um, and you know, eventually there'll be a vaccine and that's how we get through these things. Um, but right now it's only killing who it's killing, but those people count. So I wear the mask to protect other people. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be okay. I think I had it actually to tell you the truth back in the winter, but, um, uh, you know, it is bringing some of us together. We are learning a lot of things. I've done some amazing things uh, online. I sang "Amazing Grace" with Judy Collins yesterday, and uh, for um, a benefit for the World Health Organization, which our country is threatening to pull out of. And they did warn us; we just didn't listen. And that's that's the truth. Hi, Steve. My name is Joel Buchanan. I'm a retiree from Local 2102 Steelworkers in Pueblo, Colorado. I'm one of the road warriors that you met in Portland, Oregon, and you stood up for us at a concert. And I would like to publicly thank you very much for that. We won, and we also won the largest back pay settlement in the history of National Labor Relations Board. My question to you, Steve, is what are you doing now to support other unions? Well, I pay my dues. I don't cross picket lines um, uh, under any circumstances. And when I'm asked to, I do what I did in Portland. I just recently, I think this last summer for the first time, played the Portland Zoo again for the first time since that summer because I got banned for years because basically I, I, the, um, the sponsor of that concert, which was, which was Wells Fargo Bank, um, had been involved in funding uh, Oregon Steel's um, you know, lockout of these workers, the the Portland Road Warriors, those guys, the guys that came, you know, from Colorado, and um, sat there, you know, gave up their lives and sat there for their union and for their brothers until they, until they got a settlement. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it was, uh, it, it was, uh, I got banned from the Portland Zoo, which is a really good gig. Uh, I'm, I'll never forget the guy that ran the concerts at the time. I guess he forgot what city he was in, but he came up to my manager and said said uh you know what uh he needs to get off the stage right now that's it he can't say that that these people are you know paying for the blah 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 and my manager said okay well i'll i'll tell him you know we can stop the show right now but he'll come off but before he does he's going to tell him why he's coming off the stage and you know a lot of these guys out here are union members and some of them are rednecks and the guy thought better of it and let us finish the show but i did get banned from the portland zoo for years but it was totally worth it and um uh, I don't cross picket lines without negotiating something. Sometimes I'll run into a union that's that's striking at a theater that I'm playing or something, and it's and and that and you know I have to try to do something because I have a contract. And what I usually do is I try to negotiate a a, a shout out or a series of 
of, of, you know, things that I can do to help publicize the cause and something I can do to help. I always try to put something back and I believe very much. I, I do basically what I feel like I can when I'm asked for any trade union that approaches me. Um, thanks guys. Um, that's all the time. I, I got to go get John Henry <laughs> at his mom's house. It's just, it's my shift. So, um, thank you very much. Ghost of West Virginia is the new record. And, um, you got a boss, you need a union. See y'all. My daddy was a miner. My daddy's daddy too. Union got in country was all they ever knew. They worked from early morning till the evening was so blue. When they strike the mine, they walk the line, cause that's just what you do. When you're born in West Virginia, a miner through and through. Union got in country was all you ever knew. West Virginia, gold and blue Union, God and country was all we ever knew Before there was a union, the company was king Work your fingers to the bone, couldn't show a thing You shipped it cold to Friday Store and get it back again. That's why they made the union. They had nothing left to lose. The union got in country was all they ever knew. And the union got in country, West Virginia, gold and blue. The union got in country was all we ever knew. Early 